Hello everyone! Today we will talk about Deckhouse Kubernetes platform and what makes it special. So, a couple of words about myself. My name is Maxim Nabokich and there is a link to my GitHub account. And I am currently working for the company called Plant. You may know about this company because of our tech blog with illustration of little ants. And now I am the architect of the Deckhouse Kubernetes platform. So, in my free time I am the maintainer of the popular a CNCF project called DEX, this is an identity provider, and I attend special interest group authentication meetings and try to contribute to Kubernetes a little. And uh, I also contribute to other great open source products from the Kubernetes ecosystem. Yeah, and Kubernetes is a complicated thing, so maybe on top of it you can find some familiar stuff like Docker, pods, you can run some workloads using kubectl run command, which is actually pretty cool, and there are also resources that are easy to understand, like secrets, config maps, jobs, but if you want to run proper production Kubernetes cluster, you need to go deeper, and that's where you find challenges like how to run stateful applications in your cluster, how to write your own custom resource definitions, how to monitor your cluster, what is horizontal pot autoscaling, vertical pot autoscaling, what is multi-tenancy, about authentication, about authorization, about service mesh, about not local DNS, what is CSI, what is CNI, what is CRI. And I promise, if you decide to walk this path, you will find yourself one day in the middle of the night patching some Kubernetes control plane components, or writing caps to Kubernetes on directly interacting with data in your CD cluster. So, and it will take you so much time to be expert in everything. And uh, yet running Kubernetes in production is fun and it's interesting. And that's why we like it. It's a great software. But what do you need to deploy a fully functional Kubernetes? I think you can do it just in two steps. The first step is that you need to deploy Kubernetes somehow using your favorite tool. Maybe Coop ADM, maybe Coop, um, maybe Coop Spray, maybe you can follow uh, Kubernetes the hard way guide. It doesn't matter. Uh, and for the second step, you just need to deploy the rest of your platform services. That's it. And of course, it's a joke. Of course, we all understand that there is a gap between the first step and the second step. And that's why we need a platform. And Deckhouse is the Kubernetes platform that is capable of doing many things. Like, for example, Deckhouse can provision cloud infrastructure and bootstrap operational systems so you can run Kubernetes on top of this service. Deckhouse can actually deploy Kubernetes. And the chaos can deploy also essential add-ons to your cluster for monitoring, for logging, for authentication, and other things. And the chaos also automatically manages and updates these add-ons and also Kubernetes and also cloud infrastructure, so you do not need to care about this stuff anymore. What makes the house uh, really special? So there are five points we will discuss today. And the first one that the house is no operational Kubernetes platform. What does it mean? So we imply that uh, the house manages all software on nodes and in system namespaces and automatically provisions it. For example, uh, system software on nodes, Linux kernel, CRI, kubelets uh, are automatically managed. Uh, imagine that there is a node, it's not a real Kubernetes node right now, it's just a server or virtual machine, and uh, there is a Deckhouse agent installed on this node. Uh, it's not a continuerized agent, it's uh, more like a systemd unit, and it starts to provision a um, node by deploying all necessary software on it, including container runtime interface and kubelet. So kubelet makes this server a proper Kubernetes node, and uh, with bootstrap config we automatically connect this node to the cluster. And uh, the most interesting thing about it is that uh, Deckhouse agent is also connected to the control plane. So there is a dedicated extension API server for all the house agents to spread configuration files among them. So the house agent knows the version of uh, all software components on the node. And if there is a no version, the house downloads uh, 
all necessary steps from the Kubernetes API and then applies it to the node. So Kubernetes core software like control plane, etcd, certificates, so these all components are also automatically managed. Let's pretend that there are three servers for the control plane, like 0, 1, and 2. And to deploy control plane components, the house deploys a diamond set called control plane manager with the node selector pointing to control plane nodes. So inside of the pods of this diamond set is a familiar tool called kubeadm. Yeah, it's slightly adjusted to be able to run inside the container, but still it's a familiar thing. And we all know that Coop ADM deploys static manifests of etcd and for the control plane manager. And as for the readiness check, control plane manager ensures that deployed static pods are running on a node and then daemon set controller will deploy pod to the next node and to the last node. And it works so well like that even if there is a power outage, so we can just add a new node and label it properly and then the control plane manager will do its job. And that's pretty much it. And another great thing about Deckhouse is that it runs anywhere. Like there are lots of options to run Deckhouse. For example, the first group of options is popular clouds like Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure. You can run the house on top of these clouds and the house is fully integrated with their APIs. It can order load balancers, disks and machines. And if your company is a government company and it doesn't want to accidentally spill the beans and it only trusts private cloud solutions, so it's also okay. The house supports private clouds, OpenStack, VMware vSphere and bare metal installations, uh, except that bare metal installations has no auto-scaling feature. And the house can be also deployed on top of managed Kubernetes solution. In this case, the house doesn't manage control plane, but still can deploy useful add-ons to the clusters. And if you're curious what the uh, is this thing in the house? You can also install it on top of your current platform, on top of OpenShift or Rancher. And if you are just testing, if you just want to see the interface uh, of the house, you can run it on top of kind clusters. That's also a possibility. And for the operation system, the house can be run on top of Ubuntu. Debian, CentOS, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and on top of other Debian or CentOS based Linux distributions, for example, on top of Rocky Linux. And which is more important, the house clusters created with Deck House are entirely identical, and no matter which underlying infrastructure is used, uh, you can use hybrid infrastructures and deploy some clusters to Google Cloud and some clusters to your private cloud, for example, to your private OpenStack, and this will work perfectly. And in the interface of these clusters will be the same. Yeah, and by following the no operation approach and everything undergoing careful printing, careful testing priority to release, the asset of our platform is reliability. So there is a module to measure SLA called OpMeter and AppMeter does periodical checks to be sure that every system in the cluster is operational, not degraded. And two interesting things about AppMeter. The first one is that AppMeter can send metrics from the cluster via remote write to some long-term storage uh, so that you can see the SLA for all of your clusters in one place, which is uh, good. And uh, AppMeter also deploys agents for smoke testing that are migrating from node to node. So uh, you can be sure that uh, every node in your cluster works properly. Yeah, and this is uh, the web interface of the AppMeter module. Uh, in this picture, you can see that there are glue groups of probes and the first group is opened and we can see that the basic functionality probe for the control plane is failing. And by clicking on a pie, we can see uh, for how many seconds this prop is up and for how many seconds this prop is down. Yeah, and we also can see a percentage. And if you don't want to bother yourself with historical data or pies or percentage, uh, there is a simplified 
status page and this status page just shows you that uh, whether your systems of the cluster operational or degraded at the current time. Uh, moving further, the Chaos is an open source project and the Chaos is built on popular open source tools like for CNI we have Flanner or Cilium, for monitoring we have Prometheus stack with Prometheus separator, Grafana for dashboards, Trickster for query cache and Vector to collect logs. As our security offerings, there is DEX as our authentication provider, Cert Manager to issue certificates, and Open Policy Agent as our policy engine. And uh, uh, for network, uh, for ingress controller, we use the most popular solution on the market called Ingress and Jinx controller created by Kubernetes team. And for the same reason, we use Istio because it's the most popular service mesh. And uh, we also have uh, some little things uh, to be to make the life of users more convenient. Uh, metal B for bare metal clusters to make them able to load balance traffic, and also open VPN. A uh, server that runs natively on top of Kubernetes and provides access for developers to service networks and pod networks. For storage, there are two options. Uh, the first option is Lean Store and Pireos Operator, managed by Pireos Operator, so uh, it can manage your PVC out of the box. For the Ceph, we only have a CSI driver, so you need a uh, existed Ceph cluster to connect the house to this Ceph cluster and uh, as CI CD solutions there are Helm and Terraform that are used internally by Deck House to provision infrastructure and deploy modules. Uh, for users uh, there is a combination of Argo CD and Verve and all our images, our platform images, are based on Alpine distribution because it's robust, it's lightweight, and uh, all bugs are frequently fixed. So there is uh, uh, the mechanism of security updates for the Alpine distribution, which is actually pretty cool. And um, you can find more info on this uh, page if you want, because this page is auto-generated. And if we add something new to the house, you will see this on this page. Itself is also an open source software, and our code is hosted on GitHub, so everyone can go and see what we are doing. And we are also certified Kubernetes platform by Cloud Native Computing Foundation, so we are on Landscape. And you can find more info about Deckhouse by following this link, this this the link to our GitHub profile. And the last thing about uh, Deckhouse, which is really cool and which is I admire the most, is that all Deckhouse services are connected all together. For example, if you want to deploy a cert manager to a cluster, you need to deploy a Helm chart. This is okay. And if you want to deploy a Prometheus, uh, you can also deploy it via Helm chart. But if you want Prometheus to, to use uh, certificates issued by a cert manager, you need to adjust Prometheus chart configuration a little. And for a single chart, it's okay. But if you have from 7 to 10 charts, it's not so convenient, right? Uh, that's where the chaos takes its place. So in the house, there is a logic uh, how to configure all modules globally. For example, uh, if there is a cert manager enabled in the house, we need also to check is this a private environment or not. So if a cert manager is enabled and there is a private environment, uh, we try to use self-signed certificates for all the house modules. So if uh, environment is not private, we will use, we will try to use Let's Encrypt certificates. If Cert Manager is disabled, that's not a problem. We can disable HTTPS, so only HTTP will be available into the cluster. Another great example is authentication. So, if DEX is enabled in the cluster, uh, so we can deploy OAuth to proxy. Uh, and configure all ingress resources for our modules to use this 
uh, or else to proxy uh, with the auth request module for authentication. So if DEX is disabled, we can just generate some basic authentication passwords. Yeah, for some development purposes, this is also good. And uh, not only connected services make the house great, there are also managed services. Uh, for example, Grafana. Uh, so Grafana is not so cloud native here. Yeah, Grafana needs a database and SQL based uh, SQL database like MySQL and to run it on top of Kubernetes you need uh, to create a persistent volume, persistent volume claim and uh, th this uh, also not so convenient. So uh, our Grafana is managed and uh, our Grafana is controlled by our own set of custom resources uh, like Grafana dashboards for dashboards to add a data source to Grafana, you can deploy Grafana additional data source resource. And for to connect Grafana to Alert Manager, you can deploy Grafana Alerts channel uh, resource. And the same goes for DEX. So DEX is not um, capable of being configured by um, custom resources. So we created our own set of custom resources and the cows can configure DEX uh, with this set of custom resources also. We discussed how great the house is, but how to install one. So to install the house, you need a personal computer or a dedicated installation server and access to the cloud site. So the installation is based on two configuration files. The first file is called config.yaml and in this file we describe the first state of our Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster, like the Kubernetes version, uh, the state of the house modules, some provider specific uh, settings, like whether we want to deploy cluster to exist at VPC, uh, maybe we want to add some security groups to change flavor for the master nodes, and so on. And the second file, um, it's not an ordinary config file. Uh, so in this file, we put resources, uh, Kubernetes resources that we want to deploy right after uh, the cluster will be ready for using. And uh, this is great because everything in the house is a custom resource and to deploy additional nodes you need to also deploy a custom resource. To deploy ingress and drinks controller you need to deploy a custom resource. So we will use these two things uh, to provide uh, access to the cluster uh, right after it is deployed. We give these two configs to our CLI tool called Deckhouse Control and this tool uses Terraform under the hood to deploy uh, firstly to deploy basic infrastructure to the cloud like network, uh, security groups, SSH case and then it uses a second Terraform file to deploy a first control plane instance. Then uh, the house control connects to this instance by SSH and installs Kubernetes uh, uh, onto this first master node. Yeah, and uh, after this, it installs the deck house controller uh, to this Kubernetes cluster, and now the deck house controller uh, becomes in charge of configuring this cluster. So it starts installing modules, it starts creating nodes because we ordered them by creating node group on the previous step. And it also creates ingress and jinx controller to provide access to the cluster because we also ordered this controller. Uh, and yeah, uh, the cluster is ready to work. Great job. However, it is not enough to just deploy Kubernetes. We want to update it. We want to live with this Kubernetes cluster. We want to deliver security patches to this cluster. And that's why we need to update the house. And I will show you how it works. Uh, so there is a Kubernetes cluster created on a previous step with the house on board. And there is a registry, the house.io somewhere in the cloud. 
And in this registry, there are container images with newer versions of the cows. And there is, there is a, also a special image with the text table. Uh, this is not an ordinary image. This is an OCI formatted image. And uh, there is uh, no operation system or binaries in this image. There is also a, uh, there's only a single YAML file with information about the upcoming release. So the cows pulls this uh, container image and if there is a new release, the cows creates a custom resource in the cluster, which is called the cows release. If the tag exists in the registry, the cows will be updated by patching all its own deployment to the newer version. And the same goes for the next upcoming release, 1.36.4. Yeah, the chaos is updated. There are some great things about deck house releases, and the first one is release channels. Remember that previously we pulled our updates from the image with the text table? So this text corresponds to one of release channels. From less stable to more stable, it's alpha, beta, early access, stable, and rock solid. So, uh, for example, for alpha channel, you will receive uh, the most fresh and yet less tested updates. So you can also mm, declare some maintain maintenance windows in your deck house configuration. So, for example, maybe you want to receive the house update only on Friday evenings. That's also allowed. We cannot charge you for this. And uh, if you want to have fully full control of your deck house updates, you can set the updating modes to manual and then you will receive some notifications about upcoming releases waiting for your approval uh, using webhook notifications or alerts and uh, if you receive such uh, such message you know you just need to go to the cluster and run the following command uh, the command will be hinted to you in the message so uh, and as we previously talked about, uh, the chaos release is a custom resource, and in this custom resource, you can see uh, a change log for this release, a change log link, the version, uh, and uh, its transition time. So where you the chaos uh, was updated to this version. So it's pretty convenient because you have a history of releases. Uh, line in your cluster and we are also have a dedicated uh, dashboard which is called flow deck house io for all releases uh, on every release channel and we also have dates of upcoming release on this site and uh, we created this thing because we want to make the process of updating the house as transparent as possible and the final conclusion is that kubernetes is a great ecosystem, yet it's an iceberg and you do not want to touch iceberg with your bare hand because it's sharp, it's cold. You want some kind of a box to ship this iceberg and you want this box to be wrapped and with a ribbon. And this is what is made by Deck House. This is the final slide of the presentation. Thank you so much for coming. So if you are willing to install the house, there are links below. And it would also be great if you can go to the GitHub account and click a star button, because that's how we know that you liked our project. Bye-bye. I hope to see you next time.